Today we have brought you the latest Tesla news. Tesla Semi logs 1,000 mile day in run on less EV trucking study. Tesla is turning legacy automakers into niche EV producers. Tesla breaks ground on its craziest supercharger yet, a drive-in and diner. And, Tesla faces legal battle over autopilot's role in fatal accident. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. The Tesla Semi finished off its final day of data tracking in the run on less EV trucking study with a 1,000-mile trek. The Semi is highlighting a major study into commercial logistics and electric vehicles called Run on Less, a three-week-long event that assesses the performance of 21 electric trucks. The event was geared toward helping gain an in-depth understanding of both the advantages and challenges of EV trucking as the commercial sector begins to adopt sustainable Class 8 vehicles more proactively. The Semi was the keynote vehicle, and three units were to be assessed during the event, along with several other commercial vehicles, including 40 transit vans, a Freightliner Cascadia, a Volvo VNR, and a GM Bright Drop. One of the more impressive tallies through the event was given by the Semi when it trekked 794 miles in one day and followed it up with a similar performance the following day, accounting for 1,600 miles of logistics in just two travel days for the semi. In terms of local routes, this is impressive. However, on the final day of the event, the Tesla semi managed to beat the already impressive 800-mile days by traveling 1,076 miles in a single day while making only one delivery but managing to spend nearly 82% of its time driving. 11.1% of the time spent was charging, according to data from the Run on Less site, which was published daily. The semi also spent most of its time traveling at speeds of at least 50 miles per hour, according to data. 92.6% of the total travel time was spent at these speeds, while just 3.82% was spent between 40 and 50 miles per hour. 2.41% was spent between 20 and 39 and 0 to 19 miles per hour, made up the remainder of the time. The impressive nature of this traveling would prove that EV trucking is definitely capable of massive routes that are still considered to be local or daily. 1,000 miles in a day is definitely an incredible amount of coverage, and while there are likely not many instances where this 500-mile trek for a single delivery only to come back, it is comforting to know that it has been done by someone in this vehicle. Moving to the next update, Tesla is turning legacy automakers into niche EV producers. It is becoming increasingly evident that the United States electric vehicle sector is Tesla's playground and everyone else is playing by the EV maker's rules. Thanks to its head start in the industry and its quick pace of innovation, Tesla's lead in the electric vehicle sector has become very prominent. So prominent in fact, that rival automakers are starting to look like niche EV makers that only produce low-volume cars. Tesla mostly sells just four vehicles. The Cybertruck, arguably Tesla's most anticipated car today, is yet to enter production, and the Tesla Semi is yet to be ramped. In comparison, veteran automakers such as General Motors have adopted a more traditional approach by releasing and announcing numerous electric cars for multiple segments. Tesla's lineup of cars may be very limited, but the company's best sellers, the Model Y crossover and the Model 3 sedan, are dominating the market by a considerable degree. As per data from S&P Global Mobility, Tesla has been able to outsell its next 19 competitors, 10 to 1, during the first six months of 2023. Tesla sold 325,291 vehicles in the United States from January to June, more than any other automaker. General Motors' Chevrolet brand with its Bolt was a distant second with 34,943 sales. Ford, Hyundai, and Rivian followed after. The Chevy Bolt sold 35,000 units, while the Ford Mustang Mach-E saw sales of 13,600 units. It should be noted that the Bolt and the Mach-E were positioned in media reports as rivals to the Model 3 and Model Y cars. Yet in comparison to the volumes of the Model Y and Model 3, 
GM and Ford ZVs are almost like niche electric cars that are only produced in small numbers. As noted in a Reuters report, such numbers are nowhere near enough volume to fill a typical assembly plant, which usually needs to operate at 80% capacity or more to be profitable. Tesla's facilities like the Fremont factory are at full capacity, and the EV maker is establishing larger factories today to meet the growing demand for its vehicles. Veteran automakers such as Ford and GM have announced high-profile investments related to their electric vehicle programs, but with EV sales being dominated by Tesla, carmakers run the risk of maintaining a business that's unprofitable. This could result in challenges for experienced car makers, as producing EVs profitably is an endeavor that even Tesla has found extremely difficult. Overall, Tesla has achieved a lead in the EV sector, and while competitors are aiming to catch up, the EV maker is a moving target, and thus, is very difficult to overcome. Moving to the next update, Tesla breaks ground on its craziest supercharger yet, a drive-in and diner. Tesla has broken ground on its craziest supercharger yet, a drive-in movie theater and diner that features two movie screens, food, and EV chargers, giving what is the automaker's most well-rounded supercharger to date. In late August, we reported that Tesla had finally won approval for the project, which is slated to be built in Hollywood. After years of speculation and plans, Tesla finally gained approval, following the coverage of the permit approval which was posted by the city of Los Angeles in late July. For years, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has hinted that the company would build a 1950s diner that would double as a supercharger location for electric vehicle drivers. The plan was initially put into motion back in 2017, as Musk said, he wanted to bring the idea to life, giving drivers what would be a unique supercharger experience. After years of speculation and even a relocation of the project, Tesla finally landed permit approval in July. Now, it is being reported that Tesla has broken ground on the project, which is located on Santa Monica Boulevard. Groundbreaking gives us the impression that Tesla could have this project completed by the end of the year. While it's a lofty goal, this project is one of Tesla's most anticipated, and with the automaker opening its superchargers to other car companies in the spring, charging locations are one of the most heavily sought-after parts of the EV ownership experience. The images indicate the project is in its earliest stages, which is understandable, considering the project was just approved a few months ago. Moving to the last update, Tesla faces legal battle over autopilot's role in fatal accident. A landmark trial has kicked off in a California state court this week, marking the first legal battle in the United States over allegations that Tesla's autopilot feature played a role in a fatal accident. Tesla was successful and found not liable in another trial involving autopilot earlier this year, but that case involved only injuries, not a fatality. This case revolves around an incident in which Michael Lee, the owner of a Tesla Model 3, lost his life. Lee's vehicle allegedly veered off a highway near Los Angeles, hit a palm tree, and erupted in flames, all while traveling at 65 miles per hour. The crash also left his two passengers, including an eight-year-old boy, with serious injuries. The lawsuit, filed against Tesla by the victims and Lee's estate, contends that Tesla was aware of defects in its autopilot and safety systems when it sold the vehicle. Jonathan Michaels, the plaintiff's attorney, argued that Tesla should never have marketed experimental vehicles to consumers. Lee had purchased Tesla's full self-driving capability package in 2019, but at the time, the system was still in a beta testing phase, indicating that it was not yet suitable for public use. Tesla, on the other hand, denies any liability and claims that Lee had consumed alcohol before the accident. The company also questions whether Autopilot was active at the time of the crash. This case is particularly significant because it challenges Tesla's marketing and safety practices surrounding its Autopilot technology. Tesla's Autopilot and full self-driving systems have been under regulatory and legal scrutiny, with CEO Elon Musk emphasizing their importance for the company's future. 
As the trial unfolds in Riverside County Superior Court, it is expected to span several weeks, drawing attention not only from the legal community, but also from those with a vested interest in the future of self-driving technology and automotive safety. The verdict in this case could set a precedent for how similar incidents are litigated in the future, influencing the trajectory of autonomous vehicles in the United States. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.